there. Welcome to the news on Nepal Television. I am Rosina Rai, starting with the headlines. Seventeenth Republic Day being marked today. PM Dal expressed the public is Republic is the bridge of the collective political effort to build a path towards Nepal. Budget for new fiscal year to be unveiled today to revolve around the 16th five-year return and the policy and programs. At least 16 people killed after cyclone Remo rammed the coastal parts of India and southern Bangladesh. Nearly a million people evacuated. And Nepal faces defeat to Canada in its first official warm-up match in the Ruby Ashes in its T20 World Cup losses match by 63 runs. Welcome back. Now we have news in detail. Nepal today is celebrating 17th year of establishment of republicanism in the country. This historic day marks the Nepal transition from centuries of monarchy monarchy system to the Federal Democratic Republic. The People's Movement jointly launched by major political parties and the then CPN Maoist established a Federal Democratic Republic system in the country. Following the success of the People's Uprising in 2006, the first elected constituent assemblies first meeting on May 28, 2008 declared Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal. The announcement of the Federal Republic not only formally abolished the 200 plus year old monarchy but also paved a way for a radical shift in governance from the unitary to federal system in the country. Every year just a 15 over Nepali calendar mark marks as the Republic Day celebrating the establishment of a federal democratic republic governance system in Nepal. The day is being marked as the people level the, with the various programs, with the participation of the President and the Prime Minister. A special function was organized this morning as the Nepal Army Pavilion at uh, Nepal Army Pavilion Turikal, marking the Republic Day. On the occasion of Republic Day today, Prime Minister Puspakamal Dal had said, Republic is the result of a collective political efforts launched to build a prosperous Nepal where social justice prevails. It is the aspiration of a change, PM Dal said, while addressing a special function organized at Army Pavilion Turika on the occasion of the Republic Day this morning. According to him, a stage of political, political revolution was over with the establishment of a Federal Democratic Republic. He warned that any effort that tries to foil this achievement would not be successful. Dal underlined the need for Nepal cooperation and collaboration for the agenda over change. According to him, the country has been making a significant stride in people's lifestyle. Government is government is a form of protecting national interest with independent and balanced foreign policy. PM Dal added, he further explained that the relations with neighboring countries and international agencies were improved, thereby ensuring Nepal's graduation to the status of developing countries by 2083 Bikram Sambat and uh, campaigning is underway to achieve SDGs by 2087 BS. He also shared that financial and uh, monetary policies were enforced to uh, the recover national economy from slowdown. And uh, from uh, slow down, necessary laws and policies are revised to create investment atmosphere, state uh, coffers utilized for people's benefit. Uh, farmers' rights addressed uh, gradually. Construction of infrastructures intensified in efforts made for national unity to ensure self-reliant socialism, he said. Republic is not only a system but a lifestyle. It is a getting established at a civic level, the Hall Street. This special program was attended by President, Vice President, Chief Justice Speaker, Chairman of National Assembly, Deputy Prime Ministers, former Prime Minister, Ministers and Chief of Diplomatic Mission in the country. The Nepali Army 
Nepal police and the armed police force conducted march past and cultural pageant on the occasion. Uh, Nepal Army helicopter displayed a banner reading Republic Day 2081 and uh, cascaded flowers in 2 decal this morning. To other update, uh, the Constituent Assembly declared Nepal a Federal Democratic Republic on May 28, 2008, marking the end of the monarchy in the country. The first meeting of the Assembly declared Nepal a Federal Democratic Republic, establishing that uh, rulers are not great than the people. The second constituent assembly promulgated the constitution of Nepal on September 20, 2015, legalizing the republic uh, based on people's uh, power in the country. The new constitution envisages uh, and advanced in liberal federal system with the practice of uh, three tier government uh, starting. The federal structure strengthening the republic and uh, federal power provincial and the local governments uh, becoming active in the country. The Republic Day aims to bring meaningful and positive changes in people's uh, lives and move Nepal forward as a developed nation with a strong and independent economy. The practice of uh, republicanism is not only about political change but also about advancing the country on the path of uh, prosperity. Republican culture and the conduct are essential for the Republic's uh, success. Uh, recently, major political parties have made economic development and uh, the main agenda focusing on accelerating the country's uh, development and uh, prosperity by addressing the expectations of the common people. Republic Day can be meaningful in the context of that the opportunity to bask in the bright sun of the Republic can be provided to all citizens in an equal manner. The government is set to unveil the budget estimations of the government annual revenue and expenditures of the fiscal year 2024-25 today. Finance Minister Bersaman Poon will be presenting the budget before a joint sitting of both the houses of the federal parliament at 3 p.m. Earlier yesterday, Finance Minister Poon presented the economic survey of fiscal year 2023-24 in the meeting of the National Assembly, the upper house of the federal parliament. Parliament. Finance Minister Poon estimated the nation's economy will expand it uh, expand by 3.9 percent owing to the growth in the agriculture and service uh, sectors uh, despite the contraction in the productive sector and uh, the production in the industry and construction sectors of the country. With this update we take a short break here. Stay with us. Welcome back. You are watching Nepal Television News. Now we have remaining updates. Meeting between leaders of the ruling coalition and the main opposition is underway at the Prime Minister's residence in Bawata to face a result to the term of reference if the parliament approve and cooperatives a fraud. According to Rashtra Sutandra Party leader Sisi Khanna, who is also a member of the task force, said the task force members have also been invited to the meeting of the Top brass. Prime Minister Puspakamal Dahal summoned a meeting on the matter. The meeting was continued following a brief uh, intra party meeting. So Prime Minister Dahal had held uh, separate meetings with the parties. Main opposition Nepali Congress is uh, pressing the government to hold parliamentary proof into the alleged involvement of Home Minister Ravi Lamichani in cooperatives uh, misappropriation. However, a difference uh, surfaces among the ruling and the opposition Nepali Congress over giving particular emphasis and involving Home Minister Ravi Lamichani in its uh, proceedings. The major opposition Nepali Congress is holding its uh, parliamentary party meeting to discuss uh, pressing issues as annual budget and embezzlement of uh, cooperatives uh, funds. The meeting is uh, taking place in the Federal Parliament building, Banisur. The Nepali Congress has been demanding the formation of a parliamentary proof committee on embezzlement of cooperative frauds where it uh, funds, uh, rather, where it argued has the involvement of uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister Ravi Lamichani. The government is uh, scheduled to present the annual budget in the parliament uh, today and uh, the Nepali Congress uh, is learned to discussing and meeting is underway uh, as well. Now to international headliners we have 
cyclonic storm Remo, which moved nearly northwards at a speed at least 16 people have died after cyclone crashed into coastal parts of India and southern Bangladesh. The region was hit by strong gales of 110 km per hour, torrential rain and uh, tides surges that have left low-lying areas flooded. Nearly a million people were evacuated as a cyclone Remo made a landfall on Sunday evening. According to local authorities, approximately 8.4 million people lived in the cyclone's path, including 3.6 million children. The storm passed through the Bangladeshi port of Mongla and the Sagar Island of West Bengal, India on Sunday, weakening the falling day. Meanwhile, a Papua New Guinea government official has told the United Nations that more than 2,000 people are believed to have been buried alive by last Friday's landslide and has formally asked for international help. The government figure is roughly triple. The UN estimated that 670 killed by the landslide in the South Pacific Island nation's mountainous interior. The remains of only five people have been recovered by Monday, local authorities reported in a letter to the United Nations residence coordinator dated Sunday and seen by the Associated Press that the acting director of the country's National Disaster Center, Luis Lasso Mana, said the landslide buried more than 2,000 people alive and caused major destruction in Yambali village in Yanga province. To the more international update, before that, let's have a quick look into the highlights of the site. Now, remaining international updates. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to continue the war against Hamas amid international condemnation of an airstrike that killed scores of Palestinians in Rafah on Sunday. At least 45 people were killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry, while hundreds more were treated for seven uh, severe burns there, fractures in other ones. Speaking in the Israeli parliament, Netanyahu said this strike was a tragic mishap but added he does not intend to end the war before every goal has been achieved. He said it was vital that Israel took every precaution possible to protect civilians and insisted that the Israel Defense Forces IDF were using their best efforts not to harm those uninvolved in the conflict and war to continue in the country. Now to Ukraine. Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky called on Monday on the West to use all means to force Russia to peace talks during a visit to Madrid, which placed on billion euros in military aid as a Russian offensive gained a new ground. The visit came as a NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg urged Ukraine's allies to rethink their restriction on Kyiv using and Western weapons to strike inside Russia. A key demand of the Ukrainian president, we need to intensify our joint work with our partners to achieve more security and a tangible coercion of Russia to peace by all means, Zelensky told a joint press conference with the Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. Russia, meanwhile, announced it had captured two more villages in eastern Ukraine, the latest in a series of gains in recent weeks. Ukraine said that France would soon send a military military in aid to the country. Uh, with this update, let's look into the highlights of the site. In the heart of Peru's amazing region, a poor neighborhood put aside that trials and the turbulences of everyday life and celebrated an international film festival with the works from countries with a tropical forest. Many who attended the 10-day event had never seen a movie on the big screen. 
and the one used for the festival was itself unique due to the area's geography. The festival aims to be a tribute to the jungles of the world and its people to the indigenous communities in which we believe lies the answer to the challenges and the destruction that forest face now that everyone is talking about climate change, Daniel Martinez said. On the festival that ends Sunday and the works screened included the Peruvian animated short film The Engine and uh, The Melody, which tells the story of an ant that feels amazing in trees and uh, Kikada that manages to regenerate the forest by playing a produce a fluid until everything changes when a forest fire occurs. We are now moving on to sports update. <laughs> Nepal lost to Canada in its first official warm-up match held as part of preparations for the RCC Men's T20 World Cup 2024. Canada defeated Nepal by 63 runs in the match held at the Grand Prairie Cricket Stadium, Dallas of U.S. Nepal that achieved the target of 184 runs was Bundle out in 19.3 overs after scoring 120 runs. Kusomala scored highest 37 runs for Nepal. Nepal now will play next against the U.S. in its second warm-up on May 30th at the same venue. Nepal will play the first match of the World Cup against the Netherlands on June 4 also in the same venue. For this update, we come to the end of this news bulletin, but before we say goodbye, quick reminders of the headlines. Seventeenth Republic Day being marked today, PM Dal says the Republic is a result of collective efforts to build a prosperous Nepal. Budget for a new fiscal year to be unveiled at 3 p.m. to revolve around the 60th five-yearly plan and policy and programs. At least 16 people killed after a cyclone ran all around the coastal parts of India and southern Bangladesh. Nearly a million people evacuated. And Nepal faces defeat to Canada in its first official warm-up match ahead of the ICC Men's to the World Cup. Losses matched by 63 rounds. Well, this is all we have for this moment. Until our next bulletin, keep watching Nepal Television. Have a good day ahead. Namaste.